Uh, I need all the wins, yeah. yeah. Ain't no L's, I gotta get a no call and quit. Yeah. yeah, gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah, yeah. better move out the way, cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all it is. You yeah. better move, you might get knocked out. When people think of Dusty, they think of Dusty the boxer. That it just always happens. If anybody says which Dusty, which is weird because I don't know how many Dusties are, but it always not nah, Dusty the boxer. That that's always the thing that I'm attached to. I, I grew up in the gym. Um, literally, that's where I spent most of my hours of my life. Um, it was it was just what I did. It was like uh, you know I went to school. I went to the gym. Um, unfortunately, I think I went to the gym before I did my homework. You know, it was just it was just what I did. Uh, uh, I never thought about life, you know, without boxing. Long story short, taking new life to Temple Hills. Uh, we were able to meet Dusty. I didn't know him. Apparently he knew uh, Ashley, I think it was. He knew Ashley. What I learned about him is that uh, he's actually legit. Uh, he's legit in every way. We went to the gym to check out the space and I had heard that he was a professional boxer, that like he actually did this. But uh, Dave was actually with us and we were looking at the speed bag and his dad was there and his dad was like doing a few things on it, showing us how it's done. And he was like, hey, ask Dusty if, you know, which one of us could do it better. And we were like, hey, Dusty, which one of you guys could do it better? And Dusty was like, me, of course. I was like, I think we need a demonstration. You know, I'm just like, but on the inside, I'm like, is he actually about this? He gets up there and like smashes on the speed bag. I'm like, okay, he's legit. But not only in that, he's legit with the kids. When we went, I watched him talk to the kids. I watched him interact. He knows his boxing, but then he also knows these kids. Uh, he told me that one of the least things that the coaches are talking about with the kids is boxing. He was like, they're coming to us asking questions about life. He said, we've got one guy who's trying to figure out, hey, should I go to college or should I you know, do this trade that I really enjoy? He's like, so there's real life conversations that's happening and, and we love being a part of that. He's like, I just wanna take it to this next level. And uh, so that's why I came to New Life, to figure out what it looks like to take it to that next level. What I picture with, with the, uh, the gym working alongside the church and, and working on you know, all the kids' faith and everything is just uh, another home for them again, um, uh, a safe haven for them. Um, even, like, even though that's what it is now, it just becomes more of that. It's, it's a better feeling. It's not just somewhere where you go to take your mind off things. It's somewhere where you go to, to, for your mind to grow, um, whether that mentally, spiritually, you know, everything. So it kind of turns in like, obviously we're already worried about kids' physical health, um, mental health, spiritual. It, it kind of comes to all the one, you know, safe haven for them. We have a lot of kids that they come from whatever term you want to use, inner city, poverty, whatever it is. And wherever there's poverty, there, there, there's crime. Um, I don't, you know, it's just how it is. Um, so even growing up, when me and my co-owner Wally, when we, we lost people in the gym, uh, Jakari Butler, RJ Tyler, um, I, I can go on naming them, I'll forget them, but they, um, it was never why they were actively in the gym. And I'm not saying that like we're, we're the reason why these people are safe, but it is boxing that gives them, it's like a second home. This is, for me, where would I be if all my hours weren't spent in the gym? Before Wally found the gym, he was in trouble. Um, and that's just how it is. It's, 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 I don't want to take direct, you know, uh, credit for it, but I don't, it's just kind of the, the the story tells itself. So, one of the one of the benefits to bringing God into a situation where it's it's good, you know, good even without God, but bringing Him in, I think one of the benefits there is always going to be uh, the depth of community that's able to take place. Um, we can connect over boxing, we can connect over um, tons of other things, uh, but when we connect over something that's deeper than that, uh, when we connect at a literal soul level, the accountability is different, um, the, the, the check-ins are different, the expectations are different, the community is just different. And so I think one of those benefits is uh, deepening the community that's already there. Uh, that community that's already there, that's already good, that's already... One of the things that 
that I loved is uh, Dusty and his co-owner Wally. They said that uh, any kid that stuck with the program, they they never lost. Uh, they never lost a kid that stuck with the program. But some some kids who who would leave boxing programs and things like that that would give them something to do uh, would usually end up stabbed, shot, or in jail. Um, so it's obvious that something is right here. Something's going on here. Um, but the depth of community that is possible when you bring God into the picture, um, because again, it begins to answer a lot of those questions that boxing or, or you know any other activity can't quite answer. Um, those deep questions that students come with, like, why do good things happen to bad people? And, and you know, why is my life this way if, if God is actually good? Those kind of questions are able to actually be talked about. And even if not completely understood and answered, we can talk about it and we can bond over the fact that, hey, we don't quite understand it, but, but we serve a God who does and he's going to walk us through day to day on a, how to get a deeper understanding of this. Um, when you bring God into that community that's already there, that's already established, it deepens and you're able to talk about some of the stuff that uh, maybe you couldn't before. You know, on Sundays, you know, Theo will be up here, uh, uh, get, you know, doing a service for the kids. And um, I think it'll be a real fun vibe. Um, um, there'll be food and um, I already know they, they come up here on the weekends and, and hang out anyways. They might throw food on the grill, listen to music. They work out just because that's what you do when you come to the gym. But we don't, you know, it's not forced, nothing's forced at all. And I think it'd just be a fun way to, to, to help people get connected. Like uh, some people, a lot of the kids, they don't have a parent to take them to church or, or that is doing that. So this kind of, become, it makes it just so much easier to connect them. Um, it's just like a, it, it's great. I think it'd be uh, easy and fun. Ever since I've been at New Life, I've, I've noticed there's this attitude of full steam ahead, full power, like we're just gonna go. The first time I got here, I was like, whoa, like we're moving. And then it got to this point where I was like, yes, we're moving. Because one of the things that makes me most upset about churches is when we just sit. When there's this idea of growing, but not going. Like we're just gonna, we're gonna do our best to grow the church and we're gonna get as many people in here, but we're not actually gonna do anything. We're gonna preach to our people, but then we're not gonna challenge our people to actually be anything or do anything in the community. There's this idea here, man, I love what we're doing with this watch party because Dusty's hungry for it, man. And when you think of hunger, when you think of when someone is truly hungry, they will do anything possible to eat. And so when I think about us as a church being hungry, when I think about, who we are as being spiritually hungry, meaning we're gonna do anything possible to show and spread the gospel. That's who we are. We're not just gonna talk about it, we're gonna be about it. Now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, man, that's a great story, um, but I'm not dusty. I, I don't own a gym. I don't, have, I don't feel like I'm this big leader that all these people are looking up to. I wanna stop you right there. First of all, you've got people that are looking up to you from somewhere, and you've also got people that are just in your circle. All right, if you've got people that are in your circle, if you're involved in some sort of community, but Jesus has not been introduced to that community yet, and you're figuring out what that looks like, you're trying to figure out if it's even possible, I wanna let you know that God cares about what you care about. So these communities that you're in, that you're spending your time in, that you're giving your effort to, that could very well be a watch party. That could very well be your next step to introducing Christ to this community in your life. I wanna encourage you, take that step. Uh, one of the things that Dusty said is, all it took was a conversation. See, here's the thing we don't realize a lot of times, we, we, were, we were praying. The leadership here, we were praying. Lord, you've called us to go deeper, but we know that there's a spot where our faith and the deepening of our faith needs to get feet. And so Lord, show us how we are to move on this next step. Lord, show us where we're supposed to invest these things that you've blessed us with. And then almost out of nowhere, here comes Dusty. And how God had been working on his heart and then walks in and hears, don't just talk about it, be about it. What I'm trying to say is, all it takes a lot of times is open, honest communication with God and then be ready to have open, honest communication with those around you. And you never know what could be possible when introducing Christ to the community that you're in.